what I'm going to do is first look at the application form and then we're going to look at what should be in the constitution because that is the most important document for the organization. So, so you've got a copy of, the, of an empty application form. I'm, I'm just using now a uh, one that I've, that I've completed, not fully, but uh, it's been completed. So the first page, name of the organization, let's call it the ABC Development Organization. Physical address, um, postal address, the telephone number, if it's got a fax number, that must be the email address, uh, that's also important. And then the date for the financial year end. Now the MPO Act says that in the constitution you must have a, the date for the financial year end. So if it's not in the constitution, you won't get registered. So it must be in the constitution, but this date must be the same as in the constitution. Okay? Then you'll see on the left hand side there's uh, the, the address for the organizers for the director. It's the director for non-profit organizations, private bank X901, Victoria, triple zero one, and then there's also the physical address. And here at the bottom, they also say that there must be two copies of the constitution. Okay. Then on page two, it asks that you list the names of the office bearers. This is now uh, uh, the community members, Mencom and the Expo and all of those members. Now, what's important here is that if in the constitution it says that you will have a minimum of seven committee members, then at least here on this form you must have at least seven members. If you have five only on the list, but the constitution says seven, it means that you don't comply with your constitution. And that will be uh, the NPO director won't register the organization. So whenever the form is filled in, the it must always be checked with what's actually in the constitution. Is that fine? Okay. So the name and the surname of the uh, office bearer, uh, business as a residential address, and then the ID number. Now the ID number is also important because it's easy to miss a digit. But I've experienced if you miss a digit, that application will get sent back. Now, how many numbers are in the ID number? 13. 13. Okay. So, must check that all the numbers are there. Then, you have the telephone numbers uh, and then the capacity in the organization. So, uh, you know, the, um, the chairperson, treasurer, or secretary. Um, that must also be stipulated. Again, in some organizations, uh, in the constitution, they put down the different capacities or portfolios. So if you list five portfolios, so the chairperson, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer, and vice chair, then those portfolios must be in the constitution, in the application form as well. So there must be consistency with, between the constitution and the application form. And, uh, I must say, they check that at the NPO that I've done a, a lot of applications and I know that they check that kind of, that kind of detail. So that's on page two, and it, so, so there's space for six um, office bearers. So if you have more, then you can just copy uh, that page so that, that the details can be filled in on the other forms. On page three, this is now the NPO Act says, and, and we're going to look at, at, at a sample constitution or what should be in the constitution. The NPO Act says that there must be 
I think it's 13 clauses that must be in the Constitution before they will register an organization. If it's not in, then they won't register an organization. So the 13 clauses is listed on the well on the application and um, you must on the application form indicate where in the constitution that is. So um, for example the organization's name that's listed on clause in clause one, organization's objectives that's in clause two, um, organization's income and property are not distributable to its members, that's on clause uh, 4.1. Uh, some people just put on page one or page two, but I would rather suggest to put in the actual clause. Now, here, for example, it talks about it talks about um, the rules for convening and conducting meetings, including quorums required uh, for and the minutes to be kept of those meetings. So they ask for the how you conduct meetings. They ask for the quorums and for the minutes. So those like, it's three clauses all in one. So if the constitution doesn't stipulate what the quorum requirements are, it, it's, it's obviously a problem. So those must all be in. Um, at, here at the bottom they say that um, if the organization is dissolved, any assets remaining after its liabilities have been met must be transferred to another non-profit organization with similar objectives. So it's important that, that, that the act is saying that information must be in the constitution. So if your constitution is saying it will be transferred to another organization, then someone at the intro directed will might say, well, it doesn't say another non-profit organization. It must say another non-profit organization. And, and we'll look at, at the Constitution. Then the last page, oh, okay, so this is page four. It talks about the optional provisions for registration. Now you can put it in if it's in the Constitution. I normally just leave it open because whether or not you write something in there under the optional one, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, it doesn't mean that the organization is not going to get registered. But that's optional, but this one is the requirements for registration, so that is a must, first part. And then the last page, it talks about um, any additional information. Uh, number one, the date when the organization was established, that you must put in. The area of operation, must also put in, and also the uh, sector. So, um, if, for example, you're doing community development, like like uh, David mentioned earlier, if you put that in, or business development, or um, paralegal services, you know, that's what you can put in. Um, is the organization affiliated to any other body? Would you be affiliated to any other body? Okay, Western Cape Paralegal Association. And is it the, the co-op? Western Cape Paralegal Association. Okay. Okay. And then uh, the person signing the form, should be authorized to do that. So you name the person, the capacity, and also the date. Now that's what should be uh, the application form. It's, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, four pages. It's not difficult to fill in the application form, but the application <coughs> form and the constitution must be consistent. Because if there's a problem with the constitution, then the application will be rejected. And uh, in the interview that I had with Mr. Mbele, he said that oftentimes it's the constitution that is also a problem when organization, when the application gets sent back. So we're just going to talk briefly about the constitution. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, to look at the and what should be in the Constitution. Okay, 
first let's look what, at what is a constitution. I mean, you've got your constitution. How many, how many times have you reviewed the constitution in the last three years? Can't have never. <laughs> okay, that's a silent no. Um, I, I must say the constitution is your most important document. I just had somebody uh, in the week coming for advice about a constitution and they showed me the constitution and uh, I said, but, I mean, they explained what they did. And so I said, but, I mean, you, you were not allowed to do that. Where is it in the constitution? Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is, you, you, what's in your constitution, you, you're not allowed to act beyond that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what is a constitution? In terms of our courts, it says that a constitution is a contract. So if your organization adopts the constitution, it's like you're signing a contract. All the members are bound, they, the members that have accepted the constitution, they are bound by the constitution. So, the constitution, your rules, regulations, uh, all of that makes up the contract. Uh, last year, when the disciplinary committee of the ANC came up and they uh, announced the, uh, the outcome of the hearing there with, with Julius Malema, I listened to the to the uh, to the announcement, a part of it. Like for 30 minutes, the only thing they spoke about was about the constitution. Uh, they spoke about the structures in, in the organization that's in the constitution, the disciplinary committee, the uh, certain officers, because the, the, one of the key issues when something like that arises is that people would go back to the constitution. Have we complied with our constitution? And if we haven't, then it's a problem. So, constitution, very important, it says it determines the scope of the voluntary association, it determines the powers of the governing body, the, the, the management committee, and it sets out the rights and obligations of members. I suggest that your constitution be reviewed uh, at least once a year, because I've seen a lot of constitutions. Almost every constitution um, that a client would ask me to look at, I could see you know, there are some changes required, because it's, it's outdated. Uh, and that, determines what you can and cannot do as an organization. So your constitution is very important. What the NPO Act requires, um, the following information, okay? The objectives, the name of the organization, it's important that, that uh, it should be a name that can be legally used. Sometimes uh, other organizations may have used uh, or registered a name that that only they can use. So it's important that to, to be clear that like your, your, uh, the name that your organization is proposing that, that they can use it. But I know on the NPO Directors uh, database, sometimes you get four organizations with the same name. And uh, I mean, that's, that, that's a bit confusing. Legal status. Um, the Constitution must state that it's a body corporate. Body corporate means it's, it's got its own legal identity. Uh, it's a separate legal person. So, um, I mean, I'm an individual, but you can also get a legal person, like a company or a, a voluntary association. The two can do the same. Um, like I can enter into a contract, the legal person can also do that. I can buy a property, the legal person can also do that. But there's some things you cannot do. For example, I mean, you can, cannot get married to a legal person. You cannot. I mean, you might find a company attractive, but you can't get married to a company. 